Good morning everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to tell you that clam chowder is what's for dinner. And I guess if I'm going to say I'm going to make clam chowder, I have to say clam chowder is what's for supper. Now actually I have a board meetings today that go from approximately 11 o'clock this morning until I would say it's after 5 before I get home. And so I'm going to try to put together this clam chowder this morning. And once it cools, um, Bob will put it in the refrigerator. And then I'll just have to take it out when I get home and heat it up. And it'll be all ready. Now, this is not a perfect rendition of New England clam chowder. Although my mother and her mother uh, made it for years, um, I'm like a third or fourth generation Massachusetts resident until I was 40 years old. And but in the original recipe that I grew up watching my mother make, uh, flour never touched the chowder. Chowder was a soup and being a soup, it was a very soupy texture, uh, like the same texture as a beef broth. It was a milk based soup, basically. So uh, I never really did a lot of thickening. And of course, you know yourselves, anytime you go somewhere and get clam chowder today, um, it's got thickening in it, at least most of the places I have been. And I have to tell you, some of it is like wallpaper paste. And <laughs> it just does not resemble clam chowder. So I am going to put a little bit of thickening in it. I like uh, it makes kind of a little bit more of a robust meal, I think, when it's thickened. I have a recipe that I am somewhat following, and it is called My Best Clam Chowder. I think I got it off of all recipes. Um, but basically, it's the same ingredients with a few exceptions. So I'm going to take you and turn you down and show you what the ingredients are, and then we'll start putting this clam chowder together. Right back. Okay, here we are. First of all, I'm using many more clams than the recipe calls for. This is the clams that I use. They are, it is a 51 ounce can of clams and I get them at Sam's Club. They come two in a pack, and I don't remember what they cost. They're by Bumblebee, so it's not an unusual brand you've never heard of. I will tell you one thing. If you look at the ingredients on the back, they say they are ocean clams with ocean clam juice, okay? Now, ocean clams, if you think of it, are like uh, cohogs. If you are from the New England area, you're very familiar with that term. But they're not little teeny clams like you would think of as New England fried clams or steamers. They're big and meaty. They don't have big bellies on them like your fried clams do. But the reason that you have to do a little extra preparation is because some of them are like the size of maybe a um, 50 cent piece that come in this can or, you know, a quarter. And a cohog, if it is not cut small enough, is like chewing a rubber band. So what I have done with mine is put them in my food processor and just pulsed it a few times to get them small enough to be nice and flavorful, um, but not like chewing gum. This is the clam juice that comes from that can, so obviously I will not need to add extra clam juice. When I was home in Massachusetts, I would use the smaller cans of clams, usually two, and then I would buy a bottle of clam juice so you would get enough clam flavor. In this bowl, I have one large chopped onion and some chopped potatoes. It calls for like a cup, but we like lots of two things. So we like lots of potatoes in our chowder, and I was trying to use up the rest of the potatoes in the bag. Over here I have chopped celery in about a cup and chopped carrot about a cup. Neither of these would I put in original clam chowder. But I know the carrot is adding some sweetness to the chowder 
and I'm not sure what the celery is supposed to be adding but that's what the recipe calls for and it really is quite tasty so I'm going to get these things I'm going to move you over see if we can get you so you can see the pot it's quite simple to put together okay um, the biggest time constraint for this is the chopping of the vegetables obviously so let me just move you over so you can see the pot and we'll get started okay we're back and I have drained the potatoes and onions and I'm just going to add them to the pot this is sort of like a simple dump and go once you get the things all cut up I'm going to add the celery and I'm going to add the carrot and I'm just going to mix those up a little bit now I am not going to add any salt right now although it will need salt at the end because the clam juice is salty but I am going to add a good few twists of fresh cracked pepper now another purist would be using white pepper so that your clam chowder is plain white with no added color <laughs> and what this gets cooked in is the clam juice now this clam juice is very clean sometimes you can get a bottle of clam juice and you will see that it has it looks like it has sand at the bottom clams are sandy so sometimes the bottled clam juice is quite sandy also you just have to be careful not to, to get the very bottom of the bottle out okay now I have these all in here I have my stove on pretty much up on high to bring it to a boil and then I will turn it down and simmer it until the potatoes are soft I am not putting in the clams at this point in time they don't need to go in until we're really all done with the chowder and if you put them in and boil them um, they will tend to get tough so I'm going to let this come to a boil I'll bring you back and meanwhile we'll start on the second part of the chowder be right back okay here we are back and before you all yell screaming from the room yes I'm using a metal whisk in this pan and I should not but I don't like plastic whisks so <laughs> that's why I keep replacing my pans I'm using about a quarter of a cup of butter and the recipe actually calls for three quarters of a cup of butter but again I, I'm trying not to make wallpaper paste so I'm just going to put this in and let it melt and I should have started that before I put the camera back on but anyway uh, it's melting and what I'm going to do is add approximately the same amount of flour um, so it would be a quarter of a cup of flour and just making a roux it's not an unusual um, process the liquid I'm going to use is half and half so while we're waiting for this to melt sort of like watching paint dry isn't it <laughs> I will tell you that we will serve this tonight with what we call oyster crackers the little round soup crackers I'll get you the bag I have premium soup and oyster crackers um, true New England crack uh, users have a cracker that comes from Vermont uh, that is about this big they're not they're bigger than these little things and but they are a dry puffed cracker like these and um, 
but they're not something that I can get down here in Florida. And truthfully, even when I lived in Massachusetts, we never used them. We always used oyster crackers. Now, you obviously can use saltines if you don't have oyster crackers. It's just um, what goes with the chowder. I was very sad to read in the paper this past week that one of the most famous of the New England recipe, that the New England restaurants uh, in Boston, on Faneuil Hall, at Faneuil Hall, Durgan Park, which has been there since, I think, the 1800s and something, was closing and closed. Um, they were known for their clam chowder. They were also known for their somewhat insulting um, weight staff. Done in a, in a non-threatening way. It was just their modus operandi, if you want to say. Anyway, the restaurant had some things that were classic, one being the clam chowder, another one being Indian pudding. And if you're not familiar with Indian pudding, it is a pudding that is based on um, cornmeal and molasses. Hence the name Indian pudding. It was probably two staples readily available to the settlers and the Indians. Okay, I, if you can see this is boiling and I just let it go around for a little bit. I don't want it to get color. Remember, this is a white chowder. So I am going to pour in, and I pour this all in. And up to this time, nothing saying anything about this time. This is a quart. Uh, up until this time, I've never had lumps in my white sauce, or bechamel, as you should call it. Now, the, uh, the, what has to happen here is it, too, has to come to a boil in order for it to thicken. So anyway, back to Durgan Park. It um, closed, but I understand they were looking for some buyers that might buy it and reopen, and I have not heard any more about it, so I'm working under the assumption that it remains closed at this point. I'm going to go over and just give this pot a stir. It has just come to a boil. So I'm going to push it down to about medium. And this only has to boil for about, um, oh, I'd say maybe six to eight minutes because everything in there is cut very small. So it doesn't have to, it doesn't take long to cook it. So we're pretty much on the home stretch when you see these two things come together. And when I have these two, what happens is once this comes to a nice thickness, now if it's not thick enough, I can always add a little uh, extra uh, cornstarch slurry at the end. But I don't think I'm going to have to worry about that. I think this will be plenty thick for me. You can see it's it's getting a little glassy looking as opposed to like raw milk look. So it is combining well. And I'm not putting my vent fan on because it's of course right next to the camera so I can tell you that the um, aroma is getting quite clammy <laughs> because remember this other pot is cooking in clam juice but how bad can that be really <laughs> all right let me continue getting these two things thick and when I get ready to combine them, I will come back and we'll do it together. Okay, here we are back again and everything is about ready to combine. You can see the consistency of this um, bechamel now. Let me just show you with...
the spoon. It coats the spoon nicely. I did add, you'll see some flecks in there. <coughs> Excuse me. I did add some salt and pepper to the bechamel because it's just half and half. Not too much salt because I use salted butter. All right, I'm turning this down to low because I don't really want it to boil once, once I combine them. So I'm just going to take this and pour it into this. I'm sorry, left-handed so the back of the pot was action. And mix these around. Uh, let me get you over this side to see the finished product. I have to shut you off to move you. Hold on. Okay, here we are. And you can see that it is nicely mixed. It has a little bit of thickness to it, and it will thicken a little bit more as it cools. But lest you think I forgot, now I'm going to add the clams. And you want to get them all out of there. That's the good stuff. Get these mixed in. And I think if you remember, I was talking about um, one of the things I'm going to try to do this year is to do better at cooking for, they're kind of clumpy because they were sitting in that. Just gonna break them up. Um, try to do better cooking for two. Well, obviously this is a fail. <laughs> this would feed, I'd say, a good six people, if not more, with a nice bowl. Just trying to break up any of the little clumps of clams that I see. They wouldn't normally clump together, but I had drained all of the clam juice out and then put them in the food processor. And so they didn't have any moisture to keep them separated. But they'll all separate out into lots of good clams. Now let's just take a look and you can see lots of clams, potatoes. And what I'm going to do is take a little taste primarily for seasoning so we'll give it a little taste test for you. Hold on, moving up. Okay, little bowl. It's hot. Mmm. Yummy. See the potato. And you know what? I don't think it needs anything right now. Mm. 
guess what? I taste tested the whole bowl. <laughs> okay, so that's your clam chowder, a chowder for supper tonight. And I'm going to um, let this rest. It is now shut off, or will be. And let this rest. And as, as soon as it is cool enough, uh, Bob will put it in the refrigerator and then we'll just take it out and reheat it for dinner tonight. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you try it. I will put the recipe exactly as it is written down below. And you can tell, obviously, that a few changes I made. Primarily the change I made was in the um, lack of the butter and flour for the roux. Um, they well, call for three quarters of a cup. And actually, I only used a cup. And for us, that's good. That's a good thickness. If you like it thicker, use more and enjoy. It is a delicious meal. We will have this tonight with the crackers. And then when we reheat it again, uh, probably day after tomorrow, we'll go back and have some more. And I'll probably make a cornbread to go with it on, um, let's see, that would be Friday. So that's the plan for today. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you get a chance, try some New England clam chowder. Bye-bye.